Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I'm going to try and take care of the geosynchronous satellite contract and thereby get some better communication for future launches. But I've been uh, trying to get this engine to work and that has taken up a lot of my time. This NK9V, which I've seen Nathan Kell use in his uh, live streams. Uh, he can use it, but I had I've been having that same trouble where just the stage just won't separate when I have it on, and I've looked at everything. Uh, there are two different sets of models for it. There's an old version of the, the Soviet engine pack and a newer version. Tried both. Uh, tried upgrading a Realism Overhaul itself. I tried upgrading RP0. I tried an alternate configuration pack that uh, Aaronim, uh, who uh, is one of my viewers, provided for me and not, nothing works. <laughs> nothing works for this engine. Um, now it's a modification on the NK33 model for Bobcat Soviet engine pack. Oh sorry, uh, 43 for Bobcat Soviet engine pack. It is an upper stage engine so it, I, I know uh, some engines aren't very good at being upper stage engines because of the attachment nodes and stuff but this should have worked because it is a, an upper stage engine. It's designed that way and uh, nope, uh, separation just doesn't work very well and that's a shame because it's an excellent engine to use and I just don't have access to it. I can't, uh, I've, done a, I've done a lot of testing. I spent hours trying to figure this out. I even modified the configurations myself uh, trying to fix it and uh, you know uh, making sure the attachment nodes are all right but no, uh, no luck. Uh, different models, different configurations, uh, different realism overall itself and still the engine will not separate from the the stage below it and so we can't have a staging event and light that engine and it creates that weird sound that you might have seen in the previous episode so yeah that's been a huge frustration for me because uh, the ISP of this engine 345 is uh, the best that we have right now and we can't take advantage of it uh, well, I, I take it back. Uh, it's uh, well, it's the best we have right now until we unlock the actual RD0124. Though that's still a little bit underpowered on thrust. But the RD0124 is probably a long ways. Of, well, no, I take it back. It looks like we how the RD0124 probably should not be available to us right now. It's uh, it's used on the Soyuz 2.1B which is way ahead in technology uh, it's uh, and it's used on uh, second stage of some rockets planned in the Angara rocket family I don't yeah I guess but uh, yeah so it's a modern engine and we, we're not supposed to be there yet so there's something wrong here um, possibly in the midst of switching things I have accidentally created a situation where this becomes unlocked Sorry about that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't get to use that right now. But that would have a better ISP. Mm. Yeah, anyway, so that's just been a frustration of mine. But let's try this out. We're going to use the Tiger 2 rocket, which you've seen before. And so I've called this Tiger Sat. And the satellite is actually just a modification on our little chibi moon. And I've taken off the scientific instruments, it just has the communication, uh, these little Communitron 16s, very simple, no, uh, no fuss because we want to actually fulfill the contract. Let's make sure that we have everything the contract asks for. Um, so unmanned, yeah, obviously, um, and it just needs it to be very precise, it doesn't care about anything else. So that's what we've got. We've got this huge stage, 8 minute stage with the Asterisk engine and Aerozine in here and Aerozine configured thrusters. Make sure of that. And so all will be well hopefully and the rocket has been tested previously. Okay, as you can see the next thing after achieving geostationary orbit would be an uncrewed moon landing and so we'll have to see about that. Okay, here we are. SAS on, throttle up, and we will have to burn for apoapsis when we get to the equator is the plan, assuming we have connection. <laughs> okay, but let us try this. Everything is fine. Ignition. And launch. Alright. 
it's going nice and quick. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, well, I probably should turn off two of the engines, but I'll just let it go for now. High G-forces and all. Okay, here we go. Set. And ignition. Well, at least this engine separates. Now, this is from the same pack, right? This Bobcat Soviet engine pack. This engine is fine. Has no problem separating at all. Uh, no problem being in upper stage. But the NK9V that I really want does. It's very frustrating. We have way more Delta V than we strictly need for this particular mission. Yep. You might say that this is a test of how much we can pack on this thing, actually. Okay, second stage set. And ignition. Okay, the S1-5400 is ignited. And I'll do the trick. 202 by 184. And like I said, 1,082 left in this stage, 7,166 meters per second left altogether. But we better uh, make it quick because the probe core here, the Thor avionics unit, is taking a lot of power. And in fact, we would also like to get rid of the Able avionics package as soon as possible, too. So let's see. Uh, we actually have a satellite overhead here from the Lancer 2. And we want to be above the equator before burning our apoapsis. So, how about uh, getting some coordinates here? And surface info, I want to be zero degrees north. And looks very stable, so let's go. So again, the goal is to have the apoapsis also at the equator to make the inclination change easier. There's an imbalance between kerosene and liquid oxygen, which means the oxygen has boiled off a bit. Now, we won't immediately put it into a circular orbit. Uh, we can let it uh, phase and position itself above the location that we want. So we'll probably boost it to, uh, to a slightly different orbit so it can time itself. You know, maybe an hour short, so it'll move by an hour each orbit. We'll be leaving a lot of stages in orbit, unfortunately. Okay, separation. And asterisk. Asterisk engine is good. Okay, here we go. Shut down. A little bit too far, backing off using RCS. Okay, that's where I want it. Let's see now. If we go up there, that maneuver, can we flatten out and boost up to good result? can't really tell whether that's zero inclination or not, but let's pretend. Now, if we decide to put it into its uh, designated orbit right here, it'd stay above Australia. That might not be the worst place. We do a lot of burning out of Australia. You'll note, I mean, a lot of the time we have to send our signal when it's passing over Australia, right? But I'd rather uh, put it over Africa where we can bridge the gap between between the Americas and Australia. We often use, lose connection there. I think what I'll do is I'll fulfill the contract first, since it's sort of on our way, and then do the adjustment to place it in the proper location. We just want Australia to be a little bit further on. We still want to have communication with the Australia location, Otherwise, you know, we don't have any place to relay the signal back to. But we'd want Australia like to be close to be being on the horizon there. 
Now our inclination is going back up. Hmm. Hold on. Let me see what's going on about that. Let me see how far I can adjust the inclination. We need it below 3 degrees. Well, I guess the best thing to do is just to figure out when I'm at the equator. You can see we are at uh, 3 degrees 39 minutes north. And that's not going to bring our inclination down anymore. Uh, let's boost to the target periapsis though. Okay, now timing wise that's pretty good. But I need to get the inclination down, so let's go to zero degrees to where we're zero degrees north. Tumbling away. How's our power? Power is going a little bit bad. We need to finish up this stage soon. That's right. And that should be good enough if I just told that. Uh, yeah, achieved geostationary orbit. Contract has been fulfilled. Uh, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's the period. Okay, well, anyway. It's fine. It's fine. They, they accept it. Thought that would be out of bounds, but anyway. Okay, now it's about putting it into the orbit that I want. So, prograde. I'm gonna boost it up, let the world turn a bit, and then pull it back down again. I'm gonna give it an extra hour. Or two. I think you have to spend a whole day at it. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna dump this stage so that we don't have this controller anymore. Yeah. I wanna make sure we've got power. Okay, and under a time warp situation, well, we're not really facing the sun, right? Um, let's see, sun, if I say sun forward, somebody wanted me to do this, so I'm doing it. Uh, sun forward, are you going to be able to do that? Okay, so here we have Australia right on the horizon, and this now covers the entire Indian Ocean. So, retrograde. Yeah, these thrusters are not positioned great. Certainly before trying to make a landing with this, I'll have to correct that. I don't know why I have these. Uh, probably for to make it light. I chose these, but... Honestly, with the thruster configuration on this, I don't think I can get too much more precise than that, and that's not very precise. I'm just gonna leave it be. We need better satellites. But uh, we fulfilled the contract anyway, so that's one load off. Now for other things. Okay, well, the next contract to do is to land a probe on the surface of the moon, and I intend to try that. Now, do I think it's gonna work? Uh, that's a different story, but uh, here we have a modified version of the probe I just sent into geostationary orbit, and in this case I've moved the solar panels down so they act sort of like landing legs, uh, because I don't want to add extra landing legs, and do I even have extra landing legs? That's a good question. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, that's a docking light. Landing gear. You wouldn't think it would be too hard to develop landing legs, but apparently we have not unlocked that technology. Go figure. It's amazing to me. But anyway, uh, so yeah, solar panels is landing legs, antennae on top, two uh, experiments, orbital perturbation and micrometeorite, and of course the avionics package uh, there. Uh, I've changed out the RCS units instead of the unidirectional ones. We've got these ports, and nope, oh, no, that's the core. No, that's still the core. There we go. Uh, and they're burning MMH and N204 because that's what this engine uses. Yep. So that is all good. And then next we have an expanded Astra stage. Now 9 minutes and 50 seconds. And that's right up against the 
No, oh, actually, it's past the avionics limit. That's because I slapped on the solar panels after the fact. Okay, hold on. Eek. Okay, there we go. Good thing I uh, took a look at that. Okay, uh, 9 minutes and 35 seconds. And we have RCS thrusters here tuned to Aerozene and N204. And that's because the Astros engine uses that. Okay, and then uh, we have retractable solar panels now, so we have those on there. Hopefully they'll give us enough power so that we can carry the Able Avionics package with us all the way to the moon itself. So we're going to have to, a, a trip of um, however many days, 3 to uh, maybe up to 10, uh, depending on where the nodes are and how things work out. Okay, and then the rest of the Tiger rocket is the same one that we know and love with no changes. So everything else is exactly the same. And that gives us 17,000, oh sorry, 16,720 meters per second. So I'm figuring about 9,500 to get into orbit, which leaves us with about 7,000. Uh, and then 3,100 to a transfer, another 800 to 900 to get into orbit. So that's 4,000 off, leaving us with 3,000, which is enough to land. So that is the calculation. Let me get the fairings in the right place. Okay, let me save this. I've called it the Moon Tot because it's a really tiny little probe that we're landing on there. And build. And there we go. All right, so I'll meet you out on launch pad. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. All our resources are chopped off. Ignition. And launch. Off goes the moon tot on the Tiger 2. All systems operating nominally so far. Halfway through the first stage burn. Okay, here we go. Getting ready for first stage separation. First stage is out. Separation. And ignition. Okay, RD0110 is ignited. Thing looks good. Okay, fairing set. And let's extend the antennae. Okay, I thought they were action group to that, but apparently not. So let's manually activate some antennae. And separation and ignition. Alright, third stage is active. We only need about 1,300 from it, so it'll start us on our way to the moon as well. Let me lock all the fuels up here just to make sure we don't use them for any portion except for where they're supposed to be used. I was bad about that on the geostationary satellite mission. Now, you'll note that I put some antennae on this stage as well, and that's hopefully be, uh, because it can stay in orbit around the moon. Well, okay, it can't stay in orbit around the moon. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I put some antennae on there. <laughs> I shouldn't have put those antennae. Uh, it will not be staying in orbit around the moon. It will crash into the moon. But, uh, yeah. I did a silly thing. If the lander had enough fuel to land on the moon all on its own, then this could stay in orbit and provide communication support, but that's not going to happen. Okay, making orbit and shut down. 279 by 177 and we've got 809 meters per second left in this stage. Let me plot for the moon. Hello there. I just realized that I didn't press record when I started my translunar injection. And that's alright because you didn't miss an well, you didn't miss too much because after I uh, finished this stage, um, it turns out that I found out that this asterisk engine stage 
uh, had low feed pressure because this is not, I guess, it's not a service module tank, it's a default tank. I forgot to change the tank type when I made this new tank. So we can't get to the moon with this particular launch. I will have to rebuild I will have to build a new one with the right kind of tank and then try that. But we'll have to see whether it has the delta V that we need or not. But yeah, so this is sort of strange. I mean I guess it could continue using its RCS for a very, very, very long period of time. But I suppose I'll just leave this in orbit as a communication satellite. Um, yeah, I can throttle this one down, but then this one is still going to expend all of its fuel because it's now a different craft because I staged. Anyway, so that's the situation. This particular launch is a failure. I don't know, can we get some... No, I don't think we're going to get some sympathy science. No. Okay, back to the VAB. Okay, well, changing the tank type to service module has sure made things a bit tight. Um, I calculate at minimum I need about 16,000 meters per second, so call it 150 meters per second too short. And of course, we're using some of our fuel for RCS maneuvering, so yeah, it's not that great. But maybe we should try it anyway. I mean, it doesn't cost that much in relation to our budget. It does cost some time, 68 days. But yeah, we, we can try it out. Um, but basically, we've lost about 1,000 meters per second, which, which is quite a lot. Incidentally, uh, every stage right now is limited by either burn time or the capacity of the controller. Uh, the top stage and this Astra stage are both limited by the controller. And then every other stage is limited by the burn time on the engines except for the first stage which is just practicality because if you got those four engines uh, I think they could burn for 20 seconds more if I wanted them to but I'd like them to get off to a good start maybe I'll maybe I'll have them burn for a little bit longer uh, we'll call it the Tiger 2A then or uh, is this yeah this does have fuel Okay, uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll up utilization in order to do that so we don't actually change the structure of it. Call it super cooling something or another. So uh, we'll up the utilization to 88. Okay, uh, well, actually, how about 89? That gets us to 2 minutes and 30 seconds. 5 extra seconds. Shouldn't be too bad. Um, also, maybe we should actually turn off two of the engines when we get to high G-forces. That'll make things a little bit more efficient, maybe. Okay. Uh, yep. Well, let's see how this works out. So, Tiger 2A. Save and build. Yes, yes, a daylight launch. Okay, throttle up again. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Well, let's hope everything's alright this time. Okay, we're at 4G's, so I'll take the risk of turning off two of the engines. Now, that does mean that these will be burning for a little bit longer, but it should still be under their uh, rated burn time. Which I think was like 2 minutes and 45 or something like that. Eh, it might be pushing it actually. Okay, we don't need the fairing going at the same time as the engine ignition. Alright, that worked. Oh, one went first. Set. Set. Ignition. Come on. Let's try and get lined up again. The fact that one engine went out early meant that we uh, were a little bit off, but it was just barely a problem. Alright, uh, fairing separation. I'm going to lock the stages up here. Okay, second stage out, set, and 
and ignition. Third stage ignition is good. Extending the solar panels. Now with the heavier service module tank we'll probably not have as much Delta V left over in this stage because it's carrying more of a payload now. Well actually it shouldn't be more of a payload right because uh, I sized it to the capacity of the Able Avionics package. Hmm. Seems like we should end up with the same amount of Delta V if I did this right. I didn't do this quite right. Okay, 298 by 175, about uh, 50 to 100 delta V less. Well, uh, the lower stages, no, uh, nothing was really carrying more of a burden. We just didn't have as much delta V in the upper stages as we had before. Hmm. Okay, well, so not as good a launch as last time. Currently turning to the maneuver node, the transfer to the moon will cost us 3,108 meters per second. Alright, I'm gonna call that close enough. Here we go. And unlocking the next tank. Okay, separation. And ignition. Astros engine is good this time. And so we continue. We are at the maneuver node and it seems like we're about halfway through the burn, so that's good. It's not a particularly finicky burn because it's not at the ascending or descending node, it's not an off-plane transfer. Okay, we've technically lost connection, but that should not stop me from cutting the throttle. Okay. Throttle is cut, and moon periapsis 644 kilometers. Let's see, a little bit of RCS bursts. Also not controlled, uh, but we lose any sign of a encounter. So I'll keep it to there. Time warp a bit to settle it down. I mean the encounter indicator. And 326 kilometers is fine. Let's just uh, go over there as long as our electric charge is holding up. And the solar panels are working fine, though we are tumbling all over the place. Ah, uh, persistent rotation. We are about to enter lunar SOI. It's getting rather easy to reach the moon these days. Okay, but well, we must have communication at our periapsis. Uh, perhaps we should lower our periapsis a little bit. Okay, uh, I'll take 90 kilometers or so. Let's just make sure that we remain in communication and are not blocked by the moon itself. Okay, ignition and we are making orbit getting ready to shut down here Whoop, okay that's pretty low on the periapsis but well it's probably on the wrong side of the planet anyway so let me raise that a bit okay nice 7 by 32 is fine okay yeah Periapsis is in the dark. I'm not too picky about landing location as long as it's facing the Earth and it is not in the dark. And that periapsis side is definitely not fulfilling either requirement. No communication, and communication is back. We should start uh, preparing for landing now. And let's try and land, well, somewhere around here would be nice. So, retrograde. It's not going to take us very long to slow down. Well, let's see how much we have in total. As far as Delta V is concerned. 2,561. 2,609. Well, I would have told you ahead of time that what I usually like to pack to descend to the surface of the moon, to land on the moon, 
is 2,600 because that's what Apollo had. So we're, we're pretty good, I guess. Well, I'm gonna start here. And then whatever happens, happens. Wherever we land, we land. Still annoys me that the suicide burn countdown isn't showing up. Oh, there it is now. Okay, let's hold off. Oh, it, it only shows up when I'm, I've am i actually activated the engine. That's not too helpful. We will need some time to switch stages and make adjustments because of that. Okay, separation. And one kill newton thruster activation. Alright. And we're basically coming straight down now. Surface horizontal speed is not very much. Actually, maybe I'll cut that out. So the sideburn countdown is going up. I don't understand that. Why would the suicide burn countdown be going up? Something is messing with me here. Do not trust that. Yeah, it's it's only when I shut the engine off. It's different. This thing has a lot of thrust. This uh, one kN thruster has way too much TWR for this little probe. Oh boy. But the high tip TWR does cause a little bit of trouble making a nice soft landing here. Yes, I know you're technically not supposed to do stuff like this. But, I mean, in theory, you know, if you program it right, it could do it. There we go. RCS off. It's all there. All right. Well, let's do some science. Record perturbation data. Transmit. Record impact data. Transmit. Analyze telemetry. From the lunar seas. Transmit. Okay, have we fulfilled all the things? Science day from the surface of the moon and uncrewed moon landing both fulfilled. Alright, well, uh, great success. We fulfilled our contracts. And there you have it. That is a probe on the moon. Uh, a little bit of a messy way of doing things. And of course we have a lot of Delta V remaining. The reason for that is because the Apollo mission actually landed with... Uh, its engines had a fairly low thrust to weight ratio. Uh, its descent burn was like 12 to 16 minutes or something like that altogether. Um, in this case, uh, our descent burn was something like 3 minutes or 4 minutes. Uh, the actual burn time that we had to run the engines. Now, of course, with the Apollo missions, the reason they had the longer burn time is because they couldn't just shut down and restart the engine whenever they wanted to. Those were bigger engines, not glorified RCS ports. So that is the situation. Better to use the glorified RCS ports, really. Anyway, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.